Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for helping in. My name is Ransom Nyema. Um, I'm a medical student based in Nigeria, and apart from my medical studies, you know, my specialization is medical radiography. And uh, apart from my medical studies, I'm also a proficient freelance content, medical content writer. And I do a lot of writing in medical articles, on medical blog content, et cetera. And I work with healthcare and pharmaceutical companies out there. And um, I also work with personal clients out there. So today I have an amazing, amazing guest speaker. Hey, Allison, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. Um, I am Allison DiMagestri. I'm a registered nurse and a healthcare consultant, ghost writer, um, medical content writer, um, and I am happy to be here today. Amazing. So, Allison, I got a whole lot of questions for you to answer for the audience. You ready? Mm -hmm. So, if I'm looking downwards and reading the questions to Allison, so you, you don't go and wonder what Ransom is looking downwards for. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the first question goes this way. You ready? Mm -hmm. How did your journey, right, lead you to becoming a healthcare consultant and a premium ghostwriter? And how did, you, did this role support each other in your career? So what are your thoughts on that? Um, so as a registered nurse, um, I see a lot of, um, I see a lot of need for education and there's a lot of stories out there to be able to tell. Um, and as far as consulting, that's something I do all the time and have a ton of experience with. And it's something that patients really need. But when you get into writing, um, it's super important to be able to, um, to convey those ideas to patients or even caregivers that are, you know, reading the information. So, um, being a registered nurse is really the start of my journey, and it's a wonderful thing to kind of transform all of that, all of my knowledge. Um, and I've always been a writer, so that's um, helped tremendously. I've always written. Um, I actually, my first degree was in English and creative writing, so it really helped out um, once I decided to go that route. Um, but it's really incredible to have the transformation of being able to do face-to-face -face consulting um, as a nurse and also to be able to um, convey that into writing too and have, have people understand it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot you're doing right there. And um, so wait, hold on. Do you mean that someone being a nurse like you, recent nurse in the U.S., can also be healthcare consultant at the same time? Sure. Yep. That's um, you really don't even need. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of health coaches. There's a lot of nurse consultants. Um, once you have that RN, that registered nurse um, license you can do all those kinds of things and it's more patient oriented. Um, you're, you know, I wouldn't say as a consultant, you're actually giving medical advice, but there's such a huge gap between um, patients, what they know and understand and what they have to deal with and what is being thrown at them um, all the time, especially when, when you get into chronic disease. So, um, it, it's a, it's a, it's a guide, you know, really for, for patients. And, and once you're a registered nurse and you have that experience, um, it, it just comes naturally for sure. Wow. 
So how, how are you, in a nutshell, that's amazing to know, but in a nutshell, how are you finding the balance to, you know, work as a healthcare consultant and also a premium ghostwriter? How are you balancing those equations? Um, it's, I pretty much am always doing some kind of work. I feel like um, regardless of um, whether it's nursing or consulting or writing, um, it, yeah. it fills up my day, but they all feed into each other. It's not, um, none of them are, are um, you know, in a silo. They all kind of meld together. Um, so one enhances the other, I would say, because if you're thinking about content, you know, if you want to, if, if, yeah, if you want content to write, then you have that, um, coming from say consulting, you know, so it all comes together. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Allison. Um, thank you so much for that. So the second question goes to say, hmm, how do you feel about that second question? Second question, um, can I share a memory or project where my expertise as a medical consultant significantly impacted my career as a premium ghostwriter or vice versa? Um, oh, I would say, uh, I mean, a specific project you know, for a while there, I was writing um, video scripts, and one of them was for, it was a special project, and it was somebody that had been through um, a huge ordeal with his, um, with his life, and, you know, he went from the ICU to having these, you know, almost dying to having these terrible wounds as a result of um, not having enough blood flow to his extremities. And um, I think that really, it impacted me because just getting to know and understand his story and then have to convey that um, into an educational video script for for others was, that was a huge project. And I, I learned a lot from it. Um, and I was happy to be able to convey that because, you know, extending your, when you live through something like that, um, and a lot of people do, um, you don't understand how much support they need and how much education they need to be able to get to that next level. And just the fact that he shared that and I was able to convey it was was pretty neat. Amazing, that was a, an amazing project you had. And it's kind of like a video, right? A yeah. video creation. Content. Yeah, it was oh, okay. a video project. And um, yeah, it was kind of his story and writing the script um, to guide that to guide it and having clips of him. And yeah, it was, it was really fun. Definitely was the way you just mentioned those things. It, it was really a fun project you worked on. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So he, this fourth question also related to your, your career as a healthcare personnel like you. So how do you put these insights into writing okay so i'm gonna before i ask that question i want to ask you that third question first now what trends do you find most interesting or challenging in the healthcare industry in general especially in your country um that's a tough question because there's so much going on constantly um and I think the United States, we have so much technology and so much, um, so much we can do for especially chronic illness. And unfortunately, we have more chronic illness now here than we ever have before. So um, 
as far as trends go, there's there's so much information to get out there for people. Um, and it it never never ends, you know. So <sighs> that's a tough one because I could I could go on for a long, I could probably take about an hour talking about this, but um just just you know break it down for yeah, so time. um the challenges are having people understand what their um understand their chronic disease what the root is you know like what the root cause of that is and how they can make changes because they can you know that if you've got diabetes um, type two diabetes, you can, you can make so many lifestyle, lifestyle changes, um, to, and not need insulin anymore, not need those medications anymore, but it's all about lifestyle change. And that's pretty much, I mean, there's a lot of chronic disease that, you know, hypertension, you can pretty much get your blood pressure down. If you make the right lifestyle changes, the right changes in your diet. Um, and, and there's so much to learn from that and getting that informa information out for people is, is super important, you know, and whether it's consulting or, or writing, there's, it's just incredible how much you can get out. Hmm. Hmm. He's a two step practice as a research nurse currently. Do I still? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you, you still practicing as you incorporating your rights and prowess together. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, the most interesting and challenging, you know, things that happening in the healthcare industry in your country. Um apart from the US, have you been to any other countries before? Um I have. Um I've been to Italy and going back this summer. Um I've been to Ecuador to the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador. I've been to Venezuela. Um, none in a working or healthcare type of trip. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have any idea about how the healthcare system is over there? Well, Italy for sure I do. Um, because my my father actually lives there six months of the year. Um, and gets a lot of his health care there. So it, it that's another one I could go on for a while about, but um, the differences between, you know, the Italian health care system and the system here in the United States um, is worlds different. But um, just as an example, um, you know, as far as prescriptions go, um, so he, my father, um, has to use an inhaler because he has allergies and, you know, respiratory problems with that. So when he buys his inhaler here, it's $350 for the month. When he buys it in Italy, it's $15 a month. So yeah, it's incredible. And that's with almost, I would say every medication um, over there, the, the price difference is, is just incredible. And um, you know, it's socialized. So, you know, there's an obvious difference with the healthcare, but, um, it seems Italy's a lot smaller with, you know, less population than, than here. So, um, it works over there and people seem to get, seem to get good care. Wow. Wow. That was, that was so deep. That was so deep, like, it's too expensive in your country. Yeah. It's too, too expensive. But that's fine. Hopefully the government is really working towards that, right? Um, I don't know. I I I haven't seen many changes and the ones that I see aren't aren't that good. So so I'm hoping that I, I don't know. I think we we you know if you wanted to talk healthcare, we can, we can definitely do that. It's a frustrating subject, especially as yeah. a nurse, um, you see a lot of things that, that could change to make it better for patients, but, um, but yeah, that's a tough one. So that's why, you know, it's motivating for me to, um, try to get 
as much information I can for, out for people because um, sometimes that's the only way they get it. You know, the only way they get the best information. Wow. Hopefully I'm gonna fix a, a, a time for that discussion so that the audience will get more clarity in there. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your own narratives and those questions I asked you. So the fourth question goes this way. How do you put these insights into you know, writing to appeal to a wider audience? Now, what I mean by a wider audience is that there are people that are gonna come across the kind of writings you do. They're not into or don't have a background in anything related to health or medicine in general. So how do you do that? How do you break down those, especially those medical technologies and mm -hmm. medical jargons and, you know, to, for a, sim a, a, to a simple, simpler terms for a wider audience that not, especially not in anything related to health and medicine in general to understand the kind of writing to do? Yeah, that can be difficult. Um, you know, especially when you're trying to break down the scientific studies, depending on um, what, depending on what kind of writing you're doing and if um, what you're trying to understand and convey, because um, you do really have to put yourself in the lay person's shoes. And that's not always easy to do when you're not a lay person and you understand and you have to get that terminology, especially. Um, I, and I think that just takes practice more than anything. And then um, reading, rereading and editing it and even giving it to somebody who doesn't know those terms and saying, hey, do you understand this? You know, because um, even if you're clear, if you don't have the right terminology in there for, for people to understand, it's just going to go, you know, they're not going to want to read it anyway, because they're not going to understand it. So it is, I, and I do find that a little bit difficult um, because I, I write for a professional audience and I also will write for, um, you know, a patient audience and it's completely different, you know, it really is um, completely different. So um, it is challenging. And I think having, having, um, having somebody else read it is one of the best things you can do, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Why, why, why I really concur to what you just said, because me as a writer, I've written some couple of publications for a couple of organizations out there. And there are people that came across those publications that aren't into medicine or healthcare in general. So that's why I, I tell people that wants to move into medical content writing is you need to have a solid foundation into medical terminologies for the, so they can have a solid researching skills for you to you know break down those terminologies into a simpler terms like for instance if i'm talking to a a non-professional person and don't know anything about medicine or for like for me that's an upcoming radiographer in the future there are some imaging strategies i can't take from the patient and I'm trying to like explain what that is to the patient i'm not going to use some large you know medical terms, I'll just have to use, you know, like a storytelling for the audience to, or the patient to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're watching this video and you want to move into medical content writing, make sure you, you know little or not, sorry, you have to know much about the medical terminologies because you're going to write a couple of publications that needs you to do that. And you don't have to have only the medical people in your head have it at your back of your mind, at your mind that people that are into the medical are also going to see a publication. So learn how to break down and have a good research and skills. So thank you so much, Alyssa, for sharing that with us. Yeah, I think you make a good point too, um, as far as storytelling. Um, mm -hmm. it, if you really want to draw people in, telling it, telling it as a story, 
um, will that will definitely catch their attention because people want to put themselves in, you know, they want to see themselves in these situations. So if you can, if you can convey that and actually make them feel like they're in that story, they are in that situation. Um, yeah, you'll get them, you'll get them to the end for sure. Storytelling is huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the fifth question goes this way. So as a healthcare consultant, right? What strategies do you use in your writing to bridge the gap between healthcare professionals and the society? This is what I was talking about. So in a nutshell, could you tell us how you do that? Um, well, I think, you know, storytelling, like I said, is that's one of the most important things you can um, you can use because um, I'll give you an example, like case studies, you know, that's one of the best ways for a company that is trying to sell, um, you know, a medical device or any kind of product. If they have a case study that is um, basically a story about somebody who's had success and they're in that person's journey or even that company's journey, if you're writing, you know, like for business to business, um, that company's journey and how they had success with it. Um, it's, I think it's more powerful than anything else you can do, you know, and that's going to transcend, um, transcend anything. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I'm really, really, happy that the audience would greatly adore you for that. So we have three more questions to go. Okay. How do you feel? I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The sixth question, well, how do you feel about that sixth question, Allison? Um, is this a... Can you describe a project where your expertise as a writer played an essential role in communicating complex medical concepts to a broad audience? Is it that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what are the problems you faced or you're facing right now? Um, I think communicating that and the problems that you encounter. I, one of the things that that's difficult is, you know, when you're thinking about medical content anyway, and you're the one that is, you're the one that is producing it. You're not having somebody give you a subject and an outline, you know, say you want to just write something on, you know, an article on LinkedIn, or you have a blog and, and you want to get that information in. Um, you really have to try to figure out what's going to be interesting for people to, to read about, you know, and something interesting for, for me might not be as interesting for somebody else. And I think that takes, um, it does take experience trying to um, trying to decide on those things and approach it from an angle that people will really find interesting, you know, and it it does take it takes some creativity, you know, trying to um, get those things that really make sense. So I think the problems encountered are. Um, Figuring out what you want to write about, if you're not if you're not being given something from a client, and making it interesting, and coming from an angle that um, that really interests people, you know, that they really want to read it, and you can't know what everybody wants to read, you know, but there's so many interesting things out there, um, but yeah. 
I do agree. I do agree. It took a lot of creativity to do this kind of work we do. And hopefully we're doing a great job at the end, you know. So thank you so much for sharing that with us, Alison. That was an amazing answer. So we have two more questions to go, Alison. Okay. So seventh question goes this way. Based on your experience, right? How can storytelling help convey important health messages? And how do you, you know, have any, and do you have any advice for aspiring writers in this field? So what are your take, take on that? Um, so as far as, I mean, I think storytelling is super important, especially, um, especially in the health field, because it can really hit home for so many people because everybody understands how it feels to either be sick or need a test or, you know, just something that um, everybody can relate to. So storytelling can be really strong. Um, and I think the best way for newer writers to um, to get a grasp of it, a lot of times is um, talking to people, interviewing them. You know, depending on um, what their what their regular job is or their education. You know, like a lot of freelance writers do something else. You know, and they. Um, they have a job and then they freelance on the side or, you know, that might change over time. But if you're in the medical field, the more you can um, really just talk to people, you know, um, and honestly, everybody loves to tell their story. You know, I, it's, it's amazing how once you start, especially when it's about health, when you start talking to somebody you'd be surprised how much information they, they give you. So um, the more experience you have, uh, just understanding people's stories too, you know, um, the better your writing will get for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And um, telling us, um, how important storytelling you know can help convey important health topics messages you know to a wider audience. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. So we have the last question, Allison. So it goes this way: with the rapid advancement of medical term technologies, how do you adapt and incorporate these advances? into your counseling and storytelling. Mm. Yeah. There's, you know, things are, things are very rapid with technology. Um, and the only thing you can do is find the venues that are keeping you most up to date on the things that, that you write about, you know, um, and the more information, you just constantly have to be reading, you know, reading. And as far as listening, it's, um, as far as storytelling, it's listening to people, you know, but it, it, it never stops moving. Um, I think it's important to remember that, you know, so what was, um, new and up and coming a month ago, could have changed, you know, so you always have to, and especially when you're doing um, research, it's easy to find a study, but if that study is over five years old, I would think twice about using it, you know, just because everything has probably changed since then, or a lot of things have, have. so, um, always trying to find the most up-to-date information, which is not always easy because um, it, when you're trying to find these studies, you can't always access them. That's all. That's always a very um, 
frustrating part of it, but yeah, I would just say trying to keep up to date with, with the studies that are going on in your therapeutic area, for sure. Absolutely. Wow, we've come to the end of the session, Allison. Thank you so much for opening and share your own narratives and these questions for the audience to get more enlightened based on things like that. And um, so what are your last words for wrapping the session? Uh, my last word is if you are an up and coming medical content writer, um, just don't get frustrated, you know, just keep on getting yourself out there and the more writing you do, the better you're going to get. And, um, and just like ransom, I mean, you're always out there. You're always visible and it's one, it's wonderful. And people are very, you don't realize how receptive people are until you start really putting yourself out there um, and never be afraid to, to be you because that's, that's what people want to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Addison. So if you love this content, do well to subscribe, like, comment, and share to network. Hopefully it will help your network, someone your network, definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Ransom.